morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I am thankful to the management of ITP, Publishing and the Arabian Business for providing me with this opportunity to address you this morning. I'm glad to see the large level of interest Africa has always generated in Dubai across multiple forms, forums. In that sense, Dubai has already established itself as the most favored international hub for African business. As an entrepreneur engaged actively in Africa since my late teens, I have a personal interest and passion for the con continent's progress. Dubai has been a great platform for our business operations in Africa. That involves partnering with several global companies. The UAE is clearly the most ideal hub in terms of time zone. Conductive policies and geography to manage African investments and business operations. It is our hope that we successfully implement our growth plans in the coming years. In doing so, also helping our partners navigate the continent better and be a part of its growth story. As some of you may recall, late in 2015, we had the last African forum, wherein I had the chance to express views on the continent. While understanding the challenges, the speakers had expressed a high level of optimism in the future of the continent. However, things have not gone exactly as predicted. During the past year, Africa, like the rest of the world, has been going through complex economic difficulties. The growth in the African market has been severely affected with the after effects of low commodity prices. Coupled with a weak global economy, many countries in the continent are struggling to cope with a raft of problems. Problems include lack of availability of foreign exchange, to rapid depreciation of some currencies, falling investments due to currency and policy uncertainty, and raising employment problems. Financing institutions have become more averse to funding projects, and investors have been waiting on the sidelines, hoping for a recovery. The challenges have been more prominent in oil-dependent countries like Nigeria, where oil revenues feed the requisite dollars for imports of essential commodities and products. There is a saying, the bigger you, your, your challenges, the bigger your opportunity for growth. Maybe the rude shocks generated from the fall in oil prices could act as a driving phenomenon for growth in the continent. The signs of this happening are emerging rapidly. The fundamentals are still strong. Substantial domestic demand, growing middle class, abundant natural resources, better governance, improved public awareness, and others. To a large extent, the recovery of many economies in Africa will depend on how governments respond to the current situation. How policy making could be structured to provide an attractive setting for foreign investors to invest in industries, as well in healthcare, education, technology, and other services. It seems that there is a lot of money earmarked for Africa that is not deployed, given the lack of attractive and bankable projects. It is critical, therefore, to match projects with investment interests. Local value-adding industries that effectively use natural resources are the way forward. They make a huge social impact, as well as help substitute imports, say foreign exchange, provide employment, etc. This can happen at a large scale level only with local and international investors getting comfortable with associated risks. Further through effective public-private partnerships. Our group's goals and strategies are now aimed at developing such opportunities for our potential 
international partners and investors. By creating an enabling environment for investments, leveraging on 50 years of our experience in Africa. With our experience working in the world's most complex markets, create a more tenable basis for partners to deploy their technical expertise and capital in a viable manner. Currently, we're engaged in developing large-scale industries across diversified sectors. These industries will complement our well-established distribution systems in sub-Saharan Africa. For example, in the agri-business field, we're expanding our fully integrated rice value chain into the region's largest capacities. In the automobile business, we have a large portfolio of global automotive brands that we assemble, uh, manufacture, and distribute. We are establishing a large ecosystem, larger ecosystem that includes all related services. We are now developing a gas-based industrial complex in Nigeria that includes mining, steel manufacturing, power, petrochemicals, logistics, and several projects. Our business model is to invest in scalable projects along with strategic and financial partners and create a successful African specialist investment company. Our primary focus is Nigeria, where uh, where are one of the top uh, conglomerates. We're now engaged in a major investment exercise in the country and wish to be the forefront of the country's development plans. A recent McKinsey report indicates that up to 60% of the continent's population is less than 25 years old. And it has estimated that Africa's labor force will be the largest in the world by 2050. Importantly, it estimates that Africa would almost double its manufacturing output from 500 billion today to 930 billion by 2025. It is important to plan carefully and create value added uh, capacities during these difficult times. Challenging as it may sound, this is the most opportune time to invest in strategic sectors, sectors that align well with the priorities of the consumer and the local governments. Let us pray and hope that things get better in the coming days and that Africa can live up to her true potential. Good luck and best wishes for a great 2017. I do hope that this event will be productive for all of us, and we start another year that will be challenges, will be full of challenges and opportunities. Thanking, thank you again for the opportunity to speak today. Thanks.